Good morning, everybody. I'm just finishing up my last part of this project and welcome. It is going to be a fun, fantastic day. I can't wait to play today. I'm gonna let um, a few people get on for a second and um, clean up a little bit and um, then I'll show you the project. So, good morning. You are watching uh, Jane Nicole Designs. My name is Eileen and Today, as you see my shirt, hold on, as you see my coffee cup, here it is. We are doing, good morning, Joy. We are doing Christmas in July. So um, I love the idea. I thought about it for a little bit and I thought, you know what? We need to get a little jump on the Christmas um, festivities. I know it is six months away, but what happens is, is a lot of times we have wonderful intentions of doing all these fun and great projects and things like that but then when it comes to that time where you know september comes and rolls around um school starts and all that kind of thing and you're just kind of into that oh i got to get into that you know routine of the fall and then christmas comes and you're like oh i didn't get my christmas projects done so I want to help you get a little jump start on some ideas and things like that for Christmas this year. Um, I am going to be doing a, a gold and red and green kind of old fashioned theme. I usually do the buffalo check and farmhouse um, kind of outdoorsy things like that um, usually and to this, this year I'm going to do a little bit different. I'm going to go back to the old traditional um, maybe even like um antiquing kind of farm uh, non farmhouse um look this year so uh, my husband really likes lots of color for the season and when i do the little bit more you know white black and red he's like you know can we have a little bit more um color in the house and things like that so i am just um gonna do that this year so i'm kind of going a little bit back to old school and then um i'll put some of like I've got some old ornaments and things like that when I was like 1982 when I was a kid. Good morning, Renee. I'm so glad you're watching. I hope you're doing good. Um, so it was one of those where I thought, oh, I can just get some of my old ornaments out and things like that. I mean, it's, I, I have one that's this, I was going to get it out, but all my Christmas stuff, um, most of it's in the, in the shed outside. So, um, but I got uh, some... Um, old ornaments from when I was a kid, Sunday school presents and things like that. And it's 1982 and it's, um, you know, super, super just um, more of just like a wood kind of, um, you know, pine. And so I thought, you know what, let's kind of go back to the sparkly fun Christmas. Um, and so that's kind of where I'm going to be going this year. Um, and so July, I thought, you know what, let's just get a jump on Christmas and um, just kind of give you some ideas of what we're going to be doing. So we're going to be doing two projects today and kind of little multiple um, renditions of each one of them. And um, I just wanted to give you a little heads up that um, this is one of those where you can start some of this now and not necessarily do you have to go out and buy Christmas stuff right now because I went to um, Hobby Lobby and they had um, all the shelves are, are empty where the Christmas stuff is and they put in each little section they put a poinsettia so we know that they're coming but um, I even went to uh, the party store and um, I said hey do you have any Christmas stuff or you know like napkins or whatever and they're like ooh not yet <laughs> I was like, oh, because the projects that I want to do, I wanted to use some Christmas napkins, but um, unfortunately they are not out yet. So um, if you have anything from last year that you've left over from whatever, um, give it a few, I think he said it was like, a, give it a few weeks, like maybe three or four weeks. And um, some of that Christmas stuff should be starting to, to uh, appear. So anyway, but when I think of Christmas um, presents um, or gifts and things like that, I don't necessarily, um, I'm not a huge like over the top gift giver, but I really want things to be um, more sentimental. And um, I think about each gift that I give 
in a way that, you know, what would that person receiving it, would they re-gift it for one thing? Um, and what is their personality like? Um, what do they, you know, what are their favorites and things like that? So I try and do a little bit, oh, good morning, Jan. It's awesome to see you're on this morning. Um, so it just thinking with that in mind, who you're giving the gifts to, I know you can do blanket a bunch of and then start farming it out, but um, that's not me. I like to make each gift for that person for what reasons and things like that in mind. So, okay. Oh, and then let me know. We have had the weirdest morning. We, you can see a little bit right now, it's sunny. But two seconds ago, um, right before I came down, it was pouring down rain. And so one side of my house had, oh, see, you can see it. The, the cloud uh, cover came over and sometimes it's bright. So sometimes, you know, so my lighting, let me know if you guys can't see things today. Cause it's just kinda, I don't know. It's that weird summer. It had no, um, you know, forecast for rain, but then this morning at like six o'clock, it was pouring. So I don't know, anyway, but, so the first project we're going to do is, I kind of want to give you an idea of what, um, a rendition of what you could do for each of your gift ease. Um, and I'm going to do it in a couple different ways. And the first thing I was um, thinking about is um, coasters. Coasters are one of the broadest I would say one of the quick, easy, um, be able to help out um, every guest. I A couple years, oh, it's gotta be more than a couple years, probably like four years, five uh, years ago, I uh, made custom uh, coasters for everybody. And so I thought about it. Some of them I put the initials, some of them I put the theme that they liked in their house, different things like that. And so I'm gonna show you just a couple different renditions of what, what you can do. And today we're gonna use um, some Mod Podge and uh, go ahead and screenshot this, um, take a picture of it back and read it backwards. Um, we're gonna use this one. This one is uh, for dishwasher. This is the Luster. Um, we're going to be using some Mod Podge because it's one of those where I, I love to seal my projects and then um, be able to, you know, when you have somebody that spills on the coasters and whatnot, we just want to make sure that, that like whatever you put on it doesn't come off. So anyway, this is a coaster. <laughs> we were just drinking coffee. Um, my husband and I drink coffee every morning if we can um, and just kind of catch up and, and um, start the day off right. But we just use these and you can kind of see um, we we have some residue from the uh, the coffee cup. So I'm going to get um, baby wipes and I'll show you how I, I prep this. And this is a non-alcoholic um, baby wipe. So I just clean it off. Make sure the top and bottom are cleaned off as best you can. And um, then I just paper towel and you want to make sure that this is really dry. You don't want to have any um, any moisture on it. And just make sure that when you're doing this, we got a couple projects going on here. So I'm gonna move my, my products around here. And I don't know if you noticed, but I kind of changed my, my, um, my craft space around yesterday. It took me all day. I was moving things, bringing whatever, and I was moving all my, my decor around and stuff like that. And my husband's like, I need to come down and see what you're up to. And, and so then we, after that, we was like, well, I'm not sure. And then we moved other things around. But um, anyways, I'm, I'm in the Christmas spirit. So I was thinking about putting on a little music and then I thought, well, okay, that might be a little bit over the top. But anyway, okay, so this is what we're gonna be doing. And I wanna make sure that I'm gonna use my trivet here and um, give me a thumbs up if you can see. Make sure that we, that you can see where, where, what I'm doing. I'm gonna move my light down a little bit more. There we go, okay, good. I got a little thumbs up, awesome. And I'm gonna move this part, there we go. Oh, Renee, you got pouring down rain. See, I wondered. I know it's that kind of that sticky hot where I'm like, oh, I'm glad I'm wearing a t-shirt. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's one of those. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with the luster first. And um, I am going to, let's see, get one of my favorite brushes here to use. Let me look here. Um, 
this one right here is a fan brush. You can use that. That's a really good one. Um, and also, um, this is a flat, just a flat head brush. You can see yeah, like that. There we go. And I think I'll be using that because I want to make sure that each of my um, each of my uh, products I'm going to use with one brush. It it doesn't matter in that regard. I don't think that there's a huge deal if you you know use one or the other. But I'm going to first of all start with this, um, the luster, and then I'm going to finish off with the um, this is uh, fabric or tissue. It, you can do it in the dishwasher. Okay. So what are we going to put on this, right? The first one we're gonna do is I am just gonna do, oh, mom, you got sunshine, awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna do this, this is paper. This is not cardstock, but um, I love this little little um, corner down here and right here. So I'm gonna make actually a pair of matching, um, matching ones. I'm gonna, you know what, I think I'm gonna move that just because I want to make sure that you can see this. Okay, so how I do this, I'm just going to line it up just right there so that um, I have one corner on one, one on the other. Some people like to go around the edges, but I want a little bit of white to stay, you know, stand out around the outside. So let me get my glasses here. I know I'm kind of looking around because I couldn't find my glasses. <laughs> So let me know how you guys are doing. How was the fourth? And I'll start my project. You let me know how your fourth went and then, then we'll, we'll keep going. Okay, pencil. I'm just gonna make a little mark. Make a little mark. And then, okay, hold on here. Oh, there we go. I wanna make sure that when I do this, that I, I want to keep this little corner up here, so I don't want to cut all the way through my image yet. So let's go this way. And I'm just going to cut one down here. This is one of those where you can go and find your, your scrapbook stash. And like I said, if you, I just want to make sure I get the right, right side here. Nope, it's the same color. Let's do that again. There we go. Um, if you have a friend that is farmhouse, gardener, things like that, this would be an awesome. And look, you can totally, you know, you can design and, and put whatever corner you want on here. I really like this one here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mark that off. The other thing too is you can also, if you want to, you can flip it over as well. And then you won't get a, the pencil mark on your on your um, top side, but it doesn't matter. I, I think it'll be fine. There we go. And like I said, I just, so they're around about the same, just like that. And my cutter, if you can see it, it's a little bit dull. And I actually don't mind because it'll just give it a little bit. I mean, you could even tear um, some of the ones I, I tore um, little pieces of different um, elements and put it on the piece of uh, the tile there. Just a, a, a quick, the tile I got at, um, I believe it was uh, Lowe's. And I got it in, a, I think you can buy it just by, you know, by the square. Um, I also have sheets of them that you can put, just peel off and things like that. So um, I, I've actually done the same thing and made uh, ornaments out of them. So you can decide what you want to do. So let's get started. All right, let's see here. I'm gonna do, yeah, let's do the base coat. I'm gonna do with this bigger brush. And the luster is a little bit, I'll show you there. The luster is, is um, actually a little bit more pliable. It has a little bit more, um, it's, it's not as thick. So I wanna make sure that I get a nice even coat 
over the whole top. There we go. And then deciding where you want it, you could even have the, um, this is how it was originally where the flowers were on top, but I, ooh, I'm just gonna move it here. And then when you put it on, just make sure that just a little bit of the edges, it's okay if it's bigger, that's all right, because we're gonna, we're gonna be um, taking care of that. Then if you have a brayer, I don't know, um, I use this for stamping a lot, but I'm just gonna take my brayer and go back and forth and just make sure that it sticks. And like I said, it's okay that some of that is off on the side because we'll fix that. But this is how you do it. That's it. How, how easy is that? I'm gonna do the next one. Let's get the coffee residue from this morning off. And the cool thing about this project is you could do several of them at a time and just do assembly line. Let's say, um, you know, I did four uh, coasters for each family and if they were a larger family, I would do six. Um, but for the most part, even if there was two of them, I did uh, four coasters for each. So that just kind of gives you a little bit of idea. And I want to say these are like a dollar something. Um, the tiles are a little over a dollar a piece, which that makes a very, very cost effective. Um, not that you don't love your, your gift gift or, or gift E, I should say, but it's just a nice um, way to be able to tell somebody you, you care. And you could do this for birthday, you could do it for any holiday or whatever is good. I can see it multiple ways. But I just thought, you know what, when I did the ones for Christmas, um, like I said, I made them for each family member. And then, um, customize them for whatever, whatever. Okay, so I'm gonna let this sit for just a second because I wanna make sure that the Mod Podge goes and sits um, and dries a little bit before we start, we start doing that. So the next one I have, I was super excited when I found this. Isn't this awesome paper? I love it. I think it was just, oh, it's so cool. So I wanted to do this for my living room because my living room is more of like just kind of gray and white and um, but I love the, the the lemon theme. So we'll do it this way. This is just regular paper just like the other one. And like I said, I'll just, let's see if it fits too. Oh, it does, hot dog. We're gonna do that. Okay, so this one here, because I just wanted, it didn't really matter which, um, you know, I, I didn't want something specific on the paper. This actually is um, eight and a half by 11. So I'm just gonna cut it at four and a quarter and four and a quarter, just make sure I got, the, did I not do that one? There it is, okay. So I'm just gonna do one cut here, and then I'll just cut this in half. And now I have two pieces. So um, I actually got this paper at a thrift store. It was one of those finds where um, I have no idea, let me see if there's a date on here. 2017 so um you might not be able to find this exact but you know it's kind of it's one of those okay so let's make sure that we have a clean surface there we go and like i said if you really wanted to um you know if you've got some stuff on here that you really need to clean off, um, go ahead and do some isopropyl alcohol or, or whatever, anything that's, um, that'll take all the fingerprints or if you have any, any oils or anything on it, food, 
And this is one of those projects that if you got one of the larger tiles that you can use for a trivet for hot plates um, or just as a decoration, I think that would be really cool just to be able to put a decoration on there. Let's just make sure I get all the corners. There we go. And like I said, it's okay that if, if it goes off the ends. There we go. And that's the one thing about this. This is, this is one of those where you don't really have to get too technical other than just to brush some, some Mod Podge on it. That's what I like about this project. Sometimes I, I have shaky hands and doing some of the, the painting and all that different stuff. It's one of those where I kind of shy away from that stuff because it's just, it's just a lot. <laughs> And if you want to, you, you can do a couple layers. If I wanted to put something else on here, maybe a sticker or something like that. Um, the other ones I did, um, I put their initials on it so that, um, that it's more personalized so that they're like, wow, this is exactly just for me. That's what I, I love about this project. So there you go. Isn't that awesome? I love it. I love the lemon thing. And, Yellow is one of my favorite colors, so absolutely. Okay, so this is what it looks like. It's a little, the paper's a little bit more pliable, which I love, um, and now it's just drying. And I wanna make sure, like this little piece right here, it's coming up, so I wanna make sure that that sticks on there. So we wanna make sure that we don't have anything that, that comes up. I just want to make sure that the corners are, are good. So once that happens, and if you wanted to, you're welcome to use either a, like a hair dryer or whatever to, to be able to get it to dry really, um, really quick. But, um, this one here, I just wanted to make sure that the, the, um, paper soaked in and, and stuck to the, the, um, tile. So the next thing we're gonna do, let me run over here. I have a sanding block and let me see where it went. It was one of those, when I was setting up for today, it was it was one of those where now I have like, like all of my, um, my little go-to things that I, yep, see here it is. It's in another little bin, <laughs> but this is just a 3M um, sanding block. And I, I think I got this at the hardware store. But if you would like to, um, and just to kind of give it a little bit more texture, a um, little bit more of your personality, I'm just going to go along the corners here, along the side, and I'm just going to use my sanding block. And that will just kind of adhere and um, give it a little bit of a feather with the paper. And then it'll help that stick to the tile. Kind of gives it a little bit of a distressed and then a little bit more finished look something that that you you purposefully purposefully did see isn't that cool i just love it <laughs> yes yellow baby yeah um i'm i don't know some of you guys might not know i am a twin and her name i have a twin her name is christine and we are identical and she was pink baby and I'm yellow baby. And so that's kind of how yellow came to be one of my favorites. So I think I was dressed in quite a bit of yellow. I do have some, I do have some baby clothes that are yellow. And then looking at her pictures, she's pink baby and I'm yellow, which was really fun. It's the cool thing about being a twin, you kind of have a built-in best friend and that's her and I, but I think the fun part is, is um, having that bond and things like that. My older sister, Renee, her and I, I think we, we all three of us have that bond where we just, we text every day. We tell each other multiple times we love each other and it's fun to be able just to say, hey. <laughs> so, 
There we go. Isn't that awesome? How cool is that? Just a few minutes and we put a little bit of Mod Podge on there and piece of paper and a tile. Isn't that the coolest? I love it. I'm super excited about this project. Makes me want to go do a few more. I'll have to run to, I think I'm out of, <laughs> of tiles. Um, I went and ran around my house and was like, oh yeah, I have some extra tiles and thinking about that for um, this project. But the cool part about this is, like I said, you can do this in any fashion. Um, the other thing too is, is not only can you use just paper, you can use fabric, you can do vinyl. So if you want to personalize it and say happy birthday um, and put the year or whatever, if you want to say Merry Christmas, uh, you're welcome to take and do vinyl stickers or regular. You can do rub-ons. I think that would be really fun. But not a lot of, of, you know, going out and buying, if you're a crafter, it's pretty much just going and getting the, um, the tiles. So that's it. That is how you prep those. And I'm going to move these off here. I do have a little bit of, of uh, a mess here to be able to, let me get this out of the way. Because we don't want this to go into our final product here. So let me get off that off to the side. There we go. I know, I love these mats. I always, I get them at the dollar store and I don't feel bad when they get too icky that I can uh, just throw them in the garbage. But this one, this one and I, we've seen a lot. <laughs> Pounding and different things on it and there's, there's a glue and all that kind of stuff. So like I said, dollar store, a buck. And it's super fun to be able to use them again and again. Okay, so now the last thing I'm going to do before I put the final coat on this, I want to just take a paper towel and wipe each one of these off so that I don't have any um, any pieces of the, the paper or dust. But look at how easy, quick, quick, quick and easy that is. So, okay. Now, this is how I like to put this on. These are, this is a fan brush and it's a little, you know, you can get them thicker, but I love it how it fans out like this because it makes it go on really, the Mod Podge, it makes it go on pretty, pretty thin. Um, so this is the Mod Podge and you know, you can kind of tell, but it's like super, super uh, thick. So when I use this Mod Podge, I want to make sure that I get a little on my brush. And then I like for this one, I start in the middle and then I work out. And I'm gonna go only one way. So I wanna make sure that um, I get it on the corners and over the side and that's why I love um, the Spam brush. It does a really good job of um, taking this because it's so thick. I could see if you want to water it down, but I really want that, that coat to go over it because if you have a hot cup and it's, you know, condensation and whatnot, you want to make sure that um, it doesn't soak through the, the, the paper, to the paper, I should say. So. All right, now I'm just going to kind of go from one side to the other. So see how that works? I know that it's um, got that milky look to it, but it will dry clear. And you can take a cloth um, that's damp. If this gets dirty, you can take a cloth and just wipe it down. Make sure that you get on the sides. And then just go ahead and smooth it out to your liking. There we go. 
and that's it. Let it dry and you will have a beautiful coaster. If you would like, you can take little pieces of felt and put it on the bottom so that the coaster can rest because it is, like I said, it's just a tile that you use on your, um, like, you know, backsplash or, you know, in your bathroom or whatever. But um, to be honest, we use these just as is. I did not put any um, anything on the bottom and um, I kind of have a little bit, excuse me, um, I kind of have uh, some rustic-y furniture so that um, sometimes if, if it does scrape on there, uh, I it, it it's not. I actually, um, you can see on the little corners there, that's where it rests on, on the table. And I just took a sandpaper and just made sure that it was, um, you know, that there wasn't any chunks of, of the, uh, the tile that was sharp. So I'm not going to do all these because I have more things to do. So, um, but I just wanted to show you the process and how that works. And I would let this dry for 24 hours before I was, you know, I would do anything. Um, you can also do like a, a sealer if you want to. Um, this right here is a varnish. But um, I think the Mod Podge does a perfect job just to be able to, you know, seal your product. And then, um, like I said, um, I know a few of you on here uh, have the coasters and let me know if, you know what, if, if that works for you. So that is, is number one. That's project number one. And then this one here, I was super excited when I saw it because um, a lot of the farmhouse decor and things like that are the, the canning jars and things. And I was like, you know what? I have a ton of these all over. And so I was like, what do you do with these things? I, you know, I have jars and things like that, that I, um, I do all my, um, you know, candles and things like that for my daughter Emma's wedding. Um, we had a ton of these jars and we painted them and we did all sorts of things with them. And then I didn't use the tops and the, the thing. So I was like, oh, what do I do with all of these? Here we go. So um, if you watched before, this is my, this is my decor that is in my master bedroom. And I'm gonna make these for my master bedroom. So um, this is the coolest idea I think ever because it's one of those where when when you start, you know, some of these projects and you're like, oh, okay, well maybe I'll keep them and revamp and whatever. This is the perfect way to do it. So all I'm going to do is I'm gonna take my Mod Podge and I'm gonna take the top of the the can. The, uh, the jar here, and I'm gonna put Mod Podge on it. And be generous on this, because this is fabric, and I want the fabric to stick. There's also Mod Podge for fabric. Um, this one here, I'm gonna use um, for the top of it, but like I said, the luster does great. I've even seen, I don't know about you guys, if you've seen the green label Mod Podge, I don't have it, but that is specifically for outside. So if you have seen the outside Mod Podge, let me know. Okay, so I'm gonna move it where I have a little bit of my decor where I want it. And then I'm just gonna hold on to it for a second here. I want it to set up. It's a little bit sticky, so do have a baby wipe next to you. That is one thing you can take your napkin here if you want to, or paper towel. And then I'm just gonna cut around um, the outside. And I'm gonna leave like probably that much. You can see that, that about that much. Because I wanna fold it in a little bit. I want it to go around the rim. There we go. I say if you guys can see this. I hope so. So, um, while I'm cutting, I will tell you a little quick little story about the 4th of July for us. We 
went out on our boat on Friday and Saturday, slept overnight, which it was awesome. We went into this little bay on Lake Coeur d'Alene and there was nobody there in the evening. And so um, Jeffrey and I had the, the little bay all to ourselves, <clears throat> which was, it was, it was amazing. Uh, we played games and things like that. And um, we met some friends that they came, <clears throat> excuse me, came out on their boat and um, we were able just to hang out. So we came home and ended up kind of staying around our house for the 4th of July. Usually, there we go. I'm just flipping it up here, going back and forth between the story and the project here. Um, we are usually doing uh, shooting a fireworks show for friends. So this year we were at home. So, um, our dog, he's 140 pounds, but he does not like fireworks and I did not know that. So we ended up hanging out with our German Shepherd, Dusty, and not going out and watching fireworks this year, which for being a person who lights off fireworks, I was like, wow, this is very odd to be able to, to, um, sitting home but our neighborhood lit up like a Christmas tree I have never seen so many fireworks in a neighborhood it was awesome so even though I couldn't light them off myself we did get to see a very nice nice show so it was pretty fun okay so there we go I just took a little bit around the outside and there we go isn't that that's super cool. Okay, so now I want to make sure that it it's um, it's going to be okay if I put something on here and it spills. So I'm going to take the same Mod Podge, the one that um, we put on the top of the other, the fabric, same brush, and I'm just going to go around and make sure that I get it into the fabric. So I kind of pounce a little bit to get into the fabric. And then go ahead, you can swirl it, you can straight lines, just go ahead and put your Mod Podge how you would like, just like that. Okay, so here is my base, right? And then I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm just gonna put a couple little dots here and there just to make sure that the top will stay in and then go ahead just drop it in there I'm gonna use the back of my there we go um, I'm gonna push down a little bit make sure there it goes isn't that cool and now, because of the jars and things like that, you can take your, your mason jar and just put that right in there and it will sit nicely. So here's another way. In the back, you could totally put fabric on the back if you wanted to, or you could write a, you know, a note on there, put the date, whatever. So I think this is awesome. This is another way to be able to do a quick and easy coaster. So. Let me know, have you ever done this? I just saw it and I'm like, oh, that's a perfect idea to be able to do this. So I'm gonna be making a few more of these to be able to put in my, my room. And then I'll finish up on some of these right here to be able to give us gifts. But see how it's starting to dry? It's still, there's some that are a that little bit opaque, but for the most part, this will actually just dry clear and then you'll be good. So, okay, so coasters, that is one of the easy, fun, quick ideas. Go to Lowe's, get a few coasters. Even the circle ones, I think, are really fun to be able to do that. Um, some of the long rectangles are, are neat to be able to put that, and then you can put, um, you know, either some type of a, a bowl or whatever. The big, huge um, squares are awesome to be able to use. So. That is my challenge. That's my first Christmas thing. So, and then the next one, this is something that I have done before 
um, I believe two years ago. Um, so I'm bringing up kind of some old things, but some new, uh, new flair and added to each one of these. But um, I went and for each of my family members, I made one of these. And the cool, I just finished this one actually, as we were, I was hopping online, I put that on there and just made sure that, that um, I could get this on here. But this is just paper. And I wanted to show you, I know some of the, the um, fun projects and things like that that you see, it's like, how did they get that so straight? How did they get the trees to look like that? Um, this one here is, is um, all out of scrapbook paper, so you don't have to, you know, you could do it with fabric if you wanted to, but, um, and then I added just a little bit of a little fling bling on the top. And so we are gonna make one of these, but I wanted to show you what, how easy this is. And I thought, you know, okay. Um, when I saw this idea on Pinterest, um, I was like, well, I don't know about that. But after a few, few, I, I saw, okay. So this is where we're going, but it's not gonna be in the same theme, but I just kind of wanted to show you. This right here is nine and um, 10 and a quarter, and this is nine and a quarter. So it's just a piece of wood. I got, remember I say this one was one of those where I got a bunch of wood off of uh, Marketplace and the gal was like, hey, I'm selling all these pieces. It was like a big, huge box for 20 bucks. So I'm like, woohoo, that's awesome. So, you know, be on, the, be on the lookout. There's a lot of people that do kind of, they start some of these ideas and then they're like, and then they sell some of the the ends or whatever it is on marketplace go there that's i would recommend that so all it is is just just a piece of wood but what i wanted to show you is is probably the bigger thing is is how do we get these trees to look like they're actually purposeful and so you know, sometimes when you do this and cutting each of the sides and whatnot, and it gets kind of cumbersome. So I'm gonna show you a, a tip and a trick how to do that. So I'm gonna put that off to the side and we are gonna do a little bit different theme on it because I'm gonna put this one in my house. So um, let me move my, my coasters over here. And we're still gonna be using Mod Podge today. I think that's one of my new favorite things to do, but that is it. We're gonna, and let me, here. I love my little cup. Isn't that so cute? I'm Christmas all year round, I guess, right? I had to have that cup. Okay, so here it is. This is what we're gonna be using. And I know this is, it, it's, I usually spend about an hour with you and we will, we will spend about an hour because this goes super quick. So um, I wanna make sure this one here, it has a little bit of an imperfection. So I'm gonna go and just make sure your wood, what side is, is better, doesn't, doesn't matter. So I have a few pieces of scrapbooking paper. Um, in the promo, if you saw the promo, this is the Christmas, I'm sorry it's backwards, but this is the Christmas uh, paper that we're gonna be using. I believe um, you can get this, um, or at least these packs at Michael's. You can get them at Joann's, um, Hobby Lobby has them, and they're all coordinating. I love that. You don't have to worry about going, hmm, what would, you know, what would work? But these are the papers that we're gonna be using today. It is a Christmas theme, so um, I wanna make sure that I have, um, you know, just some coordinating, coordinating colors. Um, and patterns, I like to mix up patterns together. And so, um, so you don't have to worry about that. I love the colors that this is kind of my color theme that I'm going to be going with for this year. So um, the first thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to use this one here for my background because I think it's it's just kind of a neutral and there's Santa and reindeer on it. So um, I'm actually just going to take, we're going to first of all do, do the, um, do the background and then I will show you what we're going to do for the sides here. There we go. So all I'm going to do is just mark off just on that paper there. I'm just going to mark that. I'm going to leave that off to the side. 
And then here's the fun thing. You can, if you want to, you can um, just take and uh, I'm gonna do this today. This is uh, Waverly and this is Fern. This is a super pretty color. Um, it's matte, it's chalk finish. So um, I'm gonna use this today just to give it a little bit more character. And I'm going to use a brush that is a little bit um, coarse in nature. I got this at, I think it was at Walmart. Um, I love these brushes because with chalk paint, you're able to kind of just make it look a little distressed and see how it's not super um, flat. It just kind of goes into the nooks and crannies and it makes it a little bit more um, kind of textured. And so I just want to go around the out, outer rim because we're not going to be, you know, you could paint the back if you would like. You're welcome to do that. But I'm just going to go around the outside here. And I want just to give it a little bit of a rim, just in case if I um, if my picture is shorter. I don't think so. I think I cut it a little bit long. So just like that. You could do a couple coats if you would like. Um, this paint, um, the Waverly paint is very forgiving and um, you could do it where you could see the grain of the wood in between here. I'm going to paint it pretty thin because I want, I want it to dry. Um, I want it to dry quickly, but you could do two coats if you'd like. Um, I do make sure that I go along each the corners here because it does sometimes get a little lumpy and, and a lot of, um, uh, there's glue, or not glue, uh, but paint on the side here. So I just want to make sure that I get it down the side, but you know what? You can do it to your liking. And I've seen also with this, you could do white, you could do all different, you know, chalk paints. You could also stain it too. Um, if you have some just regular wood stain, and they come, the wood stain nowadays comes in so many different colors. I have white and I have uh, blue and, you know, dark brown. But this, for this project um, today, I, uh, the one that we did before, I did white. And this one is, um, you know, I just decided we're going to do some chalk paint. So, like I said, you just go ahead and get a little bit around the corner there just in case. Okay, so that's what it looks like. We're just gonna do, you can, like I said, you could do the back if you wanted to, you're welcome to, but um, I just wanted to get, um, I just want the ed edges. And so I am going to take, and I'm gonna put it on my trivet Put it off to the side here and I'm just going to let this dry for just a few minutes. We're just going to leave that alone because I want to make sure that it dries. And the next thing, make sure your hands are clean because we're going to be working with paper and paper is not as forgiving if you get paint on it. So I want to make sure that I don't have any, there we go. I don't want to have any of the, uh, chalk paint on me. So like I said, this is Fern and this is kind of my new favorite for Christmas. And um, so we might be using, you know, you might see me use quite a bit of that. So, all right. The next thing we're gonna do is I wanna cut my background and make sure that my background is ready to go. And like I said, you can use I my cutter. I, I love this cutter. It's It's been with me forever. Um, I think I got it, oh yeah. Let's see, um, we lived on, I'm looking at the, the, uh, the address because everything I have um, when I was doing scrapbook things, I would put my name on it. So if I left it somewhere or if I was doing a class or something like that, um, that they could call me. And let's see, this is around and about, let's see, 2007. So this is old, but it, I love it because it you can do replacement blades and, and, like I said, it's become one of my staple uh, 
staple tools that I use. Okay, so remember we we ticked um, the the corners here on that piece of paper. So this is what I'm gonna have for my background. I'm just gonna set that on there really quick. Yep, okay. All right, so here we go. This is the fun part. How do we get the perfect triangle, the perfect Christmas tree? So if you wanna, good morning, Amy. If you wanna write this down, um, I can also put it in the, the uh, comments, the different for the square that I have and then the different um, tree sizes. But the, the middle tree, I'll show you on this one here. The middle tree is going to be my up and, you know, front and center tallest tree. And then this one here is um, smaller and then even smaller is the second or third one over here. So first one I'm going to do, that's the largest tree. I want this one to be my front and center um, Christmas tree because I just think it's awesome. I don't know, what do you think? Should we go sideways or should we go straight up and down? I don't know, what do you think? I'm kind of like, um, let me know. So the next one, this is gonna be more of a plaid. This is gonna be the, the third. And then my small, the smallest tree is gonna be this brown um, polka dotted. So what do you think? Should we go, should we go this way? Yeah, I think maybe this way. Hmm. We'll see, okay. All right, so this is gonna be seven inches tall. So I'm gonna go down and measure. Here's my um, my ruler. I'm gonna measure this at seven inches and then make my cut. So here's my seven inches. Oh yeah, Renee, sideways, I get it, yeah, okay. So this is my seven inches. Okay, this part here, I'm gonna measure over four, I'm looking at my thing here, four and a half inches. So, let's see, what's four and a half? So four and a quarter, four and a half. Okay, so this is the side of the, this is the size of the tree. So how I get, let's see, do I want it this way? No, I think I want it this way. So how I get this perfect triangle is, I'm gonna take my paper and I'm gonna fold it right in the middle and give it a little bit of a pinch. So there's my top, that's my very tippy top. And I'm gonna line that up, see here, when you take your Cutter, see that line right there? There is a little groove that goes down in there and I'm gonna line up that little tick mark to the corner of my paper. So this is what I mean. This is the top part right there. I'm gonna put that up at the top and then the corner right here, make sure you can see this, the corner right there. And then when I fold this over and go down, it makes that perfect, perfect cut. So that's how I do it. I wanna make sure that I line up from the tippy top there to the corner down here. Line it up and then cut. Isn't that cool? I was like, the first time I was like trying to, it doesn't work. So that's my tip and trick. So the next one we're gonna be doing, this one here is gonna be six inches tall by four inches wide. So let's cut it at six. There we go, so here's the six inches tall and now it's gonna be four inches wide. Okay, so there's our piece. That's how tall the tree is gonna be and that's how wide the tree is gonna be. So I'm just gonna take it, fold it in half, 
there we go. There's my little tick mark there. Line it up at the top and then at the corner. There's one. And then the other side. And sometimes I just like to start in the middle because then that doesn't um, crease the top of your, your tree. Okay, so there's, here's number two. And then the last one that we're gonna do is that one's gonna be five. So we're gonna go five inches, five inches tall by four inches wide. So, and you can make these any sizes you want. I just, this is what I made for the project. So you can do whatever you'd like. You could do seven inches by three inches, um, depending on how, you know, what size your, your board is. You're welcome to, to customize the size, but just use the same method of starting up at the top there and then going all the way down to the side. Okay, so there we go. There's our three perfect. Good morning, Tisha. Awesome to see you're here today. So there we go. There's our three Christmas trees that we're going to be using. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take and we're going to make sure that our trees, because this is thinner, if you had cardstock, I would just probably keep it as is. But because it's not, it's, you know, pretty flimsy paper. I'm going to back it up by um, putting a piece of cardstock behind it. And this is 65 pound cardstock. You know, you can get 110. Um, but for today, I'm going to be using just, you know, this paper and cardstock so that it stays together. This right here is my favorite, favorite glue. This is from Scotch. It is called Create Tacky Glue. And um, it is white, but it dries clear. And I love this because it goes on, it's photo safe, so you can use it for scrapbooking. And it goes on metal, fabric, paper, anything. So I love it. I'm gonna take just the corner here and I'm gonna line it up to the edge. I'm just gonna line it up to the edge because I kind of, I'm, I'm just making sure that I have, I'm one of those, I like to, to conserve on my cardstock, so you can do whatever you want. You can put it in the middle if you'd like, but. And this glue here, less is best. So you don't have to use a ton, ton of glue. There we go. If you wanted to, you can take your brayer. Just make sure that it sticks down. And then I'm going to put this last one on here. So, um, like I said, if you had cardstock, go ahead and use that cardstock. But like I said, I have this is background and texture paper, which is quite a bit thinner. Okay, so there we go. Now all I'm gonna do is just take my, just my regular scissors and I'm just gonna cut, go a little bit slow so you don't, you don't wanna cut your Christmas tree. Um, I have a tiny little bit of, of white line around it and that's okay. I just wanna make sure that I don't get my Christmas tree. After all that, to make sure that it's okay. Okay, so this is what it looks like. I'm gonna actually take a little bit more of that white off. If you wanted to, you could, um, you know, let this dry and while it's drying, squish it between, um, you know, in books or things like that or whatever, but 
this just gives it a little bit more integrity so that it will stay um, stay taut for for uh, what you want to do. You don't want to make it, make it with too thin of paper, otherwise then the paper starts to wrinkle and things like that. So I want to make sure that I need to do a little bit of Mod Podge here. So I just want to make sure that this is dry, the the chalk paint, because you don't like I said. Paper is not as forgiving when you uh, get paint on it. So I want to make sure that this is completely dry. Pretty good. Yep, pretty good. So let's clean off our hands, make sure that there's no, that's me, I'm, I'm kind of messy clean. I just want to make sure I, I make a mess, but I try and stay clean at most part. <laughs> okay. All right, now it's just to put things together. So I'm gonna take my uh, Mod Podge. This is the luster that we used um, before in our earlier project with the uh, the coasters. And I'm just gonna put a nice coat on it. And I'll show you what it looks like in just a second here. I know it's hard to see when it's down here so far, but what I don't wanna do is have a lot of glumpy um, chunks or anything like that. So make sure that you, you do get it, uh, thin and that you don't have a lot of lines. Um, you want to work a little bit quickly because this, um, you don't want it to dry. Then you have to put a second coat on it and you are doing quite a large area. So just make sure, just kind of work as you go to your, to your best of the ability there. Okay. See, I can already feel it. It's starting to get tacky and which is, which is what I want. So just put a nice coat on it just so that it's, it's, um, all over. Now I'm going to push this down a little bit. All right, and here's where the brayer comes in handy. If you don't have one of these, go ahead and get, um, there's foam ones that you can little roller. I mean, even a, a paint, uh, a smaller paint roller. But I just want to make sure that it stays down. Make sure that the corners get the, the Mod Podge on there so that it does not come up. There we go. And like I said, we're gonna get some rolling in the middle here. There we go. So this is what it's gonna look like. Put this on the light here, there we go. I know, this is the crazy light today. Like I said, sometimes it's super dark and then sometimes the sun's out there and it's just crazy, crazy bright. So anyway, this is what you're gonna do. Just go ahead, just like that. And then if you would like to, just like we did with the other, you can take and just do it really soft. And then you can pull off the, the excess or just sand it off. But I don't want to sand off the uh, paint, so I'm doing a little bit light. Let me know if you've done this before. I think this is a really fun one. This is a great project just to something easy and quick. Let's pull that off. And you can use a, a sanding block like this or just regular sandpaper. I think this is like 300 grit or something like that. It's, it's not too, too fine. But I just want it to be a little bit 
just like off on the sides here. So it's got a little bit of a rim around there. And it kind of just gives it that little, that, that finished look where if you have um, a piece that's not exactly straight, it'll help you out. Okay, make sure that all your dust and stuff is you're off your surface because we're going to be using the Mod Podge and we want to make sure that, that everything is um, off. There we go. Okay, so this is our base. This is what we're going to be using. And I'll see if I can do this upside down. I haven't tried this, but we'll see. Okay, so here is our three. I'm gonna look at my other one just to make sure I put the right, put them in the right order. Okay, so the first one here, we're gonna put this one right down on the side. And then this one's gonna go up a little bit. This is how I have it on my other one. And then we're gonna put that one in the middle just like that and as they fall off <laughs> okay so for this one here I'm just gonna take the same tacky glue the 3m and I'm just gonna put it down and then we'll brayer it so that it stays in the right spot and like I said this glue is so forgiving it dries clear and that's why I use it on all my craft projects, on my cards that I make, any type of, of like this 3D projects. And like I said, you don't have to use a ton on it. It's just a little bit here and there. I'm gonna move this one up a little bit. And I want to move it over because I want this to be the front and center. Yeah. My brayer looks like it's got some glue on it. Let's move that off there. There we go. Okay, so now here is my ending. Last one. And how I do this, I want to make sure that it puffs out a little bit. So this is from the dollar store. These are little squares. And I'm just going to take a row of these squares. And they kind of just pop off like that. And I'm going to put them in the corners down the side. And I just want this to 3D kind of pop just a little bit taller than the other two trees. It just gives it a little bit of dimension. There we go. And then this is the fun part. This is the pick part where you have to pick off the little... Uh, backing on them and make sure that they're stick and that's the, that's the only thing it takes a, little, a few minutes to be able to do that but you can get I do um I have 3m that it's in a roll that you can cut off your own little pieces of, of 3d foam that pop tape um it just all depends this here I saw at the dollar store and I'm like oh perfect I'll just it's already cut for me so you can, you can get this um, at a hardware store. You can get it at Michael's, dollar store, any, any place you'd like. Okay, so there we go. Just put a few of those on there. And now I'm going to see if I can do this. I'm going to, actually, I want it pretty much in the middle. And I want it straight up and down, just like that. So we're gonna press that on there. Okay, so there we go. That's that's our, our base. And now for the fun part. This, this is the fun, embellishments. Okay, so I found this at our thrift store. It was from, I believe, last season. And um, I love this. I think this is going to be great, but it's got a stick on it. So I don't want that. So I'm just going to, if I can't, yep, can't pull it off. I'm just going to take my floral snips. These are kind of wire cutters. And we're just going to cut that off. There we go. Ta-da. And 
I want this to go on here. So I do need to do a little bit of finagling here. I'm going to push the trees forward and I'm kind of, we're going to decide where, where should I put this? Should I go in the corner? I don't want it running off the page. Actually, maybe right there or down in the corner. What do you guys think? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let you decide for a minute. But I think that that would be, oh, I don't know. Help me out. Maybe right in the middle. I got a thumbs up. Okay, in the middle or in the corner? Let me know. In the meantime, I'm going to make a bow for this because I want something to go up on the top. Um, this is my this is my uh, sparkly stuff. I think we're gonna make a bow out of this because I th that'll be cute. So this is one of those easy bow things. I'm right now. I'm into easy bow. So this I've used this bow before. I think I got it on a present or something like that. So it's already been cut and that kind of thing. So. Um, this right here is going to be my tails, so it would go down like this. And I know that's quite long, but we'll we'll trim it as we go. So I'm going to just cut a few pieces. Get my good scissors. These are my these are my cool scissors. I got them at Walmart. I love them. My other ones um, got used to cut metal, and they 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 got ruined. So I'm going to just go ahead and make a few of these pieces. Just like that. One being a little bit longer than the other, but I'm cutting the dovetail in it and all you do is just put it in half and then cut it a diagonal, just like that. So I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. Oh, there goes the, uh, there goes the sun. I might get some rain in a second or two. So I'm just layering the bow so that I have a few of few layers of the the ribbon. So I'm going to make it longer than the last one. And this is one of those where if you don't have the um, the bow tying bow tying skills. Um, this is super easy. I love I love doing bows like this because sometimes either the the ribbon is too is too uh, just crazy and trying to turn it and move it in different ways. It's just yeah, it's kind of crazy. Okay, so I have a few layers going on. So let's go from the longest to the shortest, and I'm just gonna kind of go. Let me get this back here where you can see it. Move that over. Oh, just off the corner, Renee. Okay, that's that's a good. I was kind of thinking that myself. All right, for the most part, I'm going to um, cut that. We may have to cut it a little bit shorter. We'll see. But this is how I do this. I'm going to layer the different lengths from the smallest to the longest. Just like that. And then this is all you have to do is just weave it on each other, just like an accordion, just like that. And then you can do it several different ways. If you do not have floral wire, you can just use a piece of jute. Um, this is a cool floral wire. I got this at Walmart and had no idea what that was until I made a mistake and put my put the wire in it and then it, I pushed it down on accident and it, it cuts the wire. So I don't have to worry about that. There we go. Let's see if I can do this. There it goes. Did you hear the snap? There it goes. Let's see. Did it go? Nope. I'm going to do it. For time's sake, we're gonna go real quick. Oh, yes it did. Hello. I just didn't take it off right. Okay, so here's my piece of wire. And I'm just gonna squish it together. Just like that. 
give it a little pull in the middle here and then go ahead and just twist. I know it looks kind of funny, but <laughs> trust me, this will work. Okay, so now here's my bow and I'm just gonna start moving it around to where I want. So depending on what layers you want where, I'm just gonna move it back and forth. Just like that. And we'll keep going. I, I have other things I'll show you with this. But just if you wanna do a quick and easy bow and you don't wanna to have to worry about the loop-de-loops and where they go, this is the best way to do it. So there we go. I know it looks crazy. It will actually, it'll, it'll look better in the end, okay? There we go. I like to put a little bit of a loop in, or just kind of a bump in each one of them. Just kind of moving it where you want it to go. There we go. Just like that. Super cool. And then if you want to, we're gonna keep them just right here, but you could pull those down. Um, but we're gonna put that off to the side for just a second. Okay, so Renee says, just off the corner. And I completely agree. I think that is just, just like that. Okay. So we're just gonna take our glue gun under all this. It's always under something, right? And I'm just gonna put it down. And this one here, it's, just go ahead. If you need to, you can scrape off some of the glitter. But I, there's, there's enough on here. I think it should be fine. And I want a little bit of the um, the window to look like it has a piece there. So isn't that super cute? Woohoo! I love it. Okay, we got that there. Now we can do a little bit of fun. This is some all sorts of little embellishments that I found in my in my stash of of. Um, of scrapbooking things. And then I also, I have, I have some gems here that we're gonna be using. I think because it's glittery and things like that, we're gonna use the dots here. And these are super fun. I love these. I saw these and I thought, oh, I don't know if I want them. And then I was like, absolutely, they're super fun. So we are just gonna take and Cut a piece of these and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna start embellishing and you can do whatever you want like say you can do stickers or you could do uh, any type of rub-ons and I'm just going to Let's cut down this one. And like I said, you can decide what you want to do. I'm going to do a little bit of glue. I think we'll, we'll use this here. This is, like I said, this is my go-to glue. I'm just going to put a little dot there because I want this one to be straight. And we'll keep going. This here is sticky, but it I it I like just gluing it on myself. So we'll just make a few of these lines. And you could you could totally go with a ton of ornaments and different things like that. You could just leave this as is and put um, you know, just leave it as is and put a a just use the paper. The sky's the limit on this project. You could, you know, like I said, you could hoop it up and do a lot of embellishing on it, but I think it's super fun to be able to um, 
customize things. And then when someone gets this, they know that you have home made it just for them. All right. Let me know what's the, what would be one of these? Would you, uh, what would be your theme? Would it be outdoorsy? Would it be traditional? Would it be just like the, um, the, the winter scene that we had up here, the very first one? Let me know what you would do. It's not for, so, so cute. And it's, the fun part is, is that it just gives it a little bit of a fun and bling that that sparkles. I mean, I, you could even diamond dust this whole thing. I thought about that and I thought, well, maybe it just might be a little bit too over the top to, to diamond dust it all, but I think it would be really super cute. All right. So if you wanted to, like I said, we can, we can just kind of keep going, but you can put um, all sorts of little, all sorts of little embellishments and things like that. I've also seen um, where you can put, like this right here will be super fun, is these are just little sequins. So let's put the, a few little sequins on it just to, just for kicks and grins. And like I said, this tacky glue is amazing. So all I do is just, just set it on there. Super fun. I love this project. It's one of those. I might be doing some more of these. There we go. And as I look, I like to do things that you would see. It's pleasing to the eye to do, to, um, do like a background or this type of thing in triangles so when you do that you're gonna make a triangle with what each of the each of the pieces there we go nope let's move that up there we go so it's a little bit sparkly like I said this is white glue it will dry clear so you could also put a saying down here. Like I said, I could keep going. I know it's one of those. It's getting a little bit, my time is getting over, but um, let's put on the top here. So I could put it straight on the top. I could do a little bit down on there, but I have a surprise. Let's put this straight on the top. I know if this is crazy. We're gonna we're gonna fix that. We're gonna kind of move it around a little bit. If you need to, um, go ahead and just let it sit there for a second. Yeah, these are super long. So let's make them a little bit more manageable. There we go. Oh, wrong way. Let's do this the right way. There we go. So there's the top. And this is the cutest thing ever. Isn't she the cutest? I cannot wait. I'm going to be using. I'm going to be using this. One. So we are just going to take, I just think I want the bird and a few little sprigs. So I'm going to we're gonna rip this apart, which is okay. I'm all right with that. Just like the other one, we're gonna move. And I don't know. Sometimes I just it. I don't want it the original way. It's got to be. It's got to be vamped into mine. Okay. So let's put. This is the glittery. Glittery holly. Let's just put a glue on that. Put it right in the middle and if you need to it looks like I need to these are little fingertip you get them at the dollar store put them on your fingers so you don't burn yourself it helps out a ton 
There we go. And then I'm going to put the little bird on there. Isn't that so cute? I love it. Get enough glue on there so that it doesn't fall off. We just, that would be a tragedy after we've done all this work and then something falls apart. That is definitely one of those where I make sure that when I give something out. Okay. Isn't that super cute? All right, if you wanted to, you could take a few of these sprigs. Let's go in the middle here. I'm gonna just glue some of these sprigs so that they pop out of the of the ribbon. All right, I need to also trim off my wire here. Let's get that. We just don't want wire sticking out. There we go. And then let's just start moving things around. There we go. Like I said, I could futz around and play around with this. Just giving, giving it a little bit of extra bling. Okay, so let me get that. There's the, so if you um, have glue string, we call them glue, glue string cobwebs or something like that, go ahead and um, shoot it with a hair dryer and that takes all the little, um, little cobwebs of, of the glue off and so you don't have to worry about that. But isn't that fun? You could. Just take Mod Podge and then go ahead and put um, diamond dust all over this and make it super, super sparkly. It's just up to you. So let me show you the first one. This was where we, this is where we were going. And this is where we ended up. Isn't that cool? I know, I, you know we'll do both of them like just like that. So this is a super easy project just to be able to take some paper and then Mod Podge it on there, do a little bit of painting. So, you know, a little bit of craftiness. And um, so everybody can, you know, like I said, you can just make it for, I, I could see this for uh, outdoorsy or like I said, reindeer, it's fun. But um, I will put the sizes of the, the trees that I use today in the comments, um, but uh, this is it. So here is week one. Of Christmas in July so next week I'm not gonna tell you but there's gonna be a surprise coming along um, we're gonna do some more Christmas so the whole month of July I just want to help you kickstart your Christmas um, just the festivities of getting things ready so that when this holiday comes around you're all ready and you don't have to worry about it so a um, few things if you want to be notified that um, I'm gonna be on live or if I have something that is a sale or things like that um, if you in the comments put in telegram I will um, message you and get you signed up so that when I come on live um, I have a little send out a telegram that'll let you know um, even Monday I was on and it wasn't Wednesday at 10 so um, every once in a while I'll just pop on and and say hi or give you a message of things that are um, like say on sale in my store right now this is the Mary and Bright um, shirt that I have for Christmas it's in my Etsy store Jane Nicole designs um, it's super fun. I'm trying to get where I'm trying to do free shipping. So um, you'll just be paying for the shirt. So that's um, one of the things I'll do for the month of July. And um, I do have some sh Christmas shirts that are already up in my store. So um, if you would like, go ahead and share this video. Give me some thumbs up. That just helps me get visible on what's going on in my shop and my um, Facebook page. Thank you absolutely from the bottom of my heart to come and hang out with me today and i will see you next week with christmas and july and um go ahead and in the comments if there's something that you want to see i am open for suggestions and to be able to um you know if you have any questions about this video i do go back and look at it just to make sure um also if you don't see the little live it's illuminated go ahead and put hashtag replay and that just allows me to to know when you're watching but thank you so much for hanging out with me today and you all have a wonderful day take care